And just some more dancing out here on the floors. You know, it's a, a, like I said, the house really, really gets going. The fires get going. Everybody's happy to share. The other thing that you see, you'll see more regalia starting to come back. You know, it's, it's really nice to see more and more people, you know, gathering cedar bark and making clothing or, or doing weaving or, or just it's an inspiration for people trying to find, you know, to come back. You know, one of the things that, you know, I look at uh, Lewis and Clark, you know, um, when the commemoration was coming up, the, one of the things that uh, was hard for the council to do was try to decide whether we were going to participate in Lewis and Clark or not, because what did Lewis and Clark bring the Chinook people other than another path into our area? And we knew that uh, Lakota were opposing um, Lewis and Clark at the time, and uh, um, we thought maybe we would have to be doing that too. But it gave us a plot. We, we, we voted, the council voted for, to, to actually participate in some of the events. But it gave us a platform to tell our story, you know, about the Chinook, you know, and about how we're not a federally recognized tribe. And so many times when you're out there telling people that you're not a federally recognized tribe, you, their jaws would drop and they would say, <laughs> but you're the most written about tribe you know, uh, in the Northwest. What's, what's the story with that? So we'd have to tell that story. But the other thing that I think Clu uh, Lewis and Clark, or I like to refer to them as Clueless and Lark, but uh, um, <laughs> um, is that there was, there was a, a thirst for our culture and a demand. You know, they wanted, they wanted Chinook presence. So it, it helped to bring the money to build this plank house and our canoe and, and a few other things. But it also, I think it kind of stirred up a, a a thirst amongst tribal members, you know, to get out there and do more, more things that be more Chinook and in the public, you know, so. <coughs> Children again, these, these kids are here at the fire, you know, just you got to tighten up those drums and get ready for the songs. But, you know, to get these kids to learn the songs and they had, I believe these kids traveled from South Bend. Uh, Tony was involved in the Head Start, uh, a Title VII program down in South Bend, and he was going down there and teaching kids uh, how to, uh, a lot of the songs and so forth, and they were just all happy to come up and participate in winter gathering. They hadn't been up here, you know, so like I said, more inspiring of the youth. The sharing of the songs, sharing of our friends. This, this, <laughs> well, you know, you got, got to go back to D.C. This, this particular picture I was in here because I went back to D.C. Uh, and as a steering uh, committee member of uh, uh, a plank house was able to accept award from the Secretary of Interior. <laughs> Ironic thing was is that uh, on, on the, uh, the award it clearly says that I'm a Chinook Council member even though they don't recognize us as a tribe, you know, so. But uh, that's evidence, you know, more evidence <laughs> for the future. So. <laughs> You know, some of our friends, you know, they, they come back time and time again. You know, uh, Lester here, he, he's macaw. He had, uh, uh, any time, any time that the Chinook people had something going, whether it was our first salmon ceremonies or a dedication of a park or winter gatherings, Lester would be there sharing those songs and bringing back songs that had traveled. You know, I mean, the Chinook people traveled so far. You know, the, okay, the Chinook people had traveled so far that, uh, um, we touched people all along. So up in, up in Nia Bay uh, with the macaw, we would share songs with them and he would bring those songs back and we deliver them back to us as well, you know. And uh, our, our trade routes were from, you know, all the way down to Northern California up into Vancouver, BC in those canoes. And that's the other thing about in the journey, when I'm out on the journey and I'm listening to these people talk or sing, then you start picking up those little Chinook words here and there. So it's kind of nice that you know that you're, you know, they were touched by our ancestors. And, and being out on the water, it, it's always nice. That's almost too calm there, <laughs> you know? Skokwal, I don't think Skokwal knows how to react. This is just a small fragment of the canoes that you'll see out on the journeys representing all those various nations. <coughs> and once again, being in the plank house and sharing the songs. First salmon ceremony, you know, very, very important ceremony to us. Um, I don't know, we've been doing it about eight years now, it seems like, maybe longer. But, uh, you know, to total respect for the salmon, you know, so that the salmon will go out and tell the others that uh, we treated with total respect, that first salmon, and uh, uh, tell them it's okay to come ashore, ancient, an ancient ceremony. 
and of course, always when we come to the house, we, we like to uh, say a prayer to the house and cleanse the house, you know, and, and just make sure the house is kept, kept well spiritually for our ancestors. <coughs> this is opening the traditional highways out in the Willapaw Bay, going from Showwater to Bay Center. Um, you know, there's so many, so many highways that we traveled on, and we just like to open it up with our neighbors and, and travel with our neighbors all the time. It's, 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 it's really nice. And we do it, we do it because of our ancestors, you know. That's a, Catherine George, she was married to Thomas Huxwell. She was my great, great, great grandmother, a very proud lady. And uh, recently I was reading her obituary and uh, it stated in there that she had traveled to Fort Vancouver and attended the Catholic Church down there. So but, uh, I didn't know she had came up this part of the river. So. And our elders, you know, it's always important. It's always important to gather that knowledge and our elders are more than willing to share, share that knowledge with us. And it's, like I said, it's all, it's all for our ancestors and it's all for our youth to carry on what our ancestors wanted us to. So, thank you. I am awesome.